Good evening. I'm glad you have joined me beside Still Waters tonight. Tonight our theme is a word fitly spoken. A word fitly spoken. And I would just like to start our Beside Still Waters segment and this uh, devotional time together by reading the, I've got three verses tonight and uh, two of them are from Proverbs, one of them is from Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah. Uh, I, would, I would just like to go ahead and read those scriptures at the beginning here and then we'll look at them individually and I'll share some devotional thoughts with you on them. Proverbs 25, and we'll be praying throughout the segment uh, as the Lord leads, as the Holy Spirit touches our hearts. We will just uh, begin to pray and seek the face of the Lord concerning what we're reading, what we're wanting the Lord to do uh, in us, what we want the Lord to do through us. So let's just begin by reading those three verses. Uh, Proverbs 25, 11 says, and I'm in the Amplified Version. It says, a word fitly spoken and in due season, a very picturesque language, a word fitly spoken and in due season is like apples of gold in settings of silver. That's, that's one of those things that the wise man wrote that you can see as he's speaking of it. Proverbs 15, 23 says, A man has joy in making an apt answer, and a word spoken at the right moment. How good it is! And then our third scripture that we're looking at tonight is Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, from the Amplified again, and it says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a disciple and one who is taught that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He wakens me morning by morning. He wakens my ear to hear as a disciple, as one who is taught. Before we get into our first scripture, Proverbs 25, verse 11, a word fitly spoken is our theme for this time besides still waters. Let's just spend a, a minute here in prayer, preparing our hearts. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your speaking to us and for your dealing with us. Father God, we, are, we bless you because your word speaks to us daily. Your word speaks to us moment by moment. Your word speaks to us occasion by occasion. Thank you, Lord God. Mm. And we ask that tonight, this be one of those occasions that your word speaks to us in particular. That your word uh, grasps our heart, gets a hold of our heart, gets a hold of our thoughts, gets a hold of our imagination. Mm. Thank you, God. Mm. Lord God, we need a word in, and this is the due season when we need a word from you. Our nation needs a due word from you, from your servants, from your obedient ones who hear you and speak your word. We need a word in due season. Our families need a word in due season. This is that season when we need your word. 
while many are clamoring after the words of celebrities and many are clamoring after those who say, I have an answer, or I have an answer, or this is the means to an answer, or this is the method to an answer, or this is the platform to stand on for your answer or for the answer for our nation. We need fitly spoken words from your mouth, God Almighty, from your written word to speak to us. Thank you, God. May the Lord bless you tonight, and may the Lord give you, while, while we're in our time beside still waters, our devotion tonight, may the Lord speak to you, and He can speak to you about something I'm not even reading here. He can speak to you about something that I'm not even mentioning devotionally that I'm getting from these scriptures. Uh, the Lord can speak to you about something that's way out here in another area that you're dealing with, that's, that's uh, encumbering you, that's uh, got you pressed down, or uh, that big oppositional gorilla that's sitting on your chest and you can't even breathe. Heavenly Father, I ask you to bring a due word, words of wisdom, words of escape, words of resolve, words of solution, a way out. Thank you, God. Our theme tonight is a word fitly spoken. And we've got three verses. Proverbs 25, 11 is the first verse. A word fitly spoken, it says, the wise man says, from the book of Proverbs 25, 11, a word fitly spoken and in due season is like apples of gold in settings of silver. It's, I, I've always enjoyed that verbiage. I've always found comfort in it. A word fitly spoken uh, to me that says in uh, uh, my Western Hemisphere upbringing and culture and knowledge, it, you know, it's a word that just fits just right. You know, it's, it's a word that fits just right, right there. And that is true. God will give you words that just fit right there for something that needs to be fitted right there. But in the original language, in the Hebrew, the word fitly there, speaks of roundness. It speaks of, of a wheel, I think, uh, is, is one of the terms that that word fitly there means. In other words, there is a word from God that will roundly and fittingly roll into our situation. Uh, when I was reading this in my devotion earlier, uh, I was just meditating on this, and, and when I discovered that the word fitly there means uh, roundness or a wheel, it was like I could see a, a wheel like gently rolling down a gentle grade, and it just heads straight on, goes and goes and goes. And, and that thing that is round can just, just like roll in there into that place where it needs to fit, where it's needed, where it's wanted, where it will serve a purpose, where it will answer questions, where it will bring resolve for issues that have gone without resolve. I'm telling you in 2019, God is going to bring you. Have faith for it. Faith it. Believe it, confess it, uh, pray it. God is going to bring resolve for not one issue for you in your life or your family or your community or your church or our nation. Hey, let's just, let's just go wild and big enough with this thing to say God is going to bring fitly fitted words uh, round uh, roundness, wheels will roll into place as easily as a wheel rolls. Roll into place for solutions that we need personally. 
solutions for our family. Not just our family to make the mortgage or our family to to uh, find a way to get the kids educated, but uh, to find a way for the family to love one another, have compassion for one another, care about one another's issues and needs, and as this, as our theme says tonight, speak a word fitly into those needs. The Spirit of God can take His Word, His words of life, His fountain of life, His sweetness, His result. Well, doesn't the, uh, isn't my memory serving me correctly when I say that the psalmist in one place says, uh, I love your words, God. I love your word. They are sweeter to me than the honeycomb. I speak that sweetness into your ears, into your soul, into your emotions, into your psyche. May you receive the living word of God that is alive and active, the book of Hebrews says. It's always alive and active. And the psalmist says, it's sweet to eat. He said, I eat your word, Lord, and I find it sweet, sweeter, sweeter than the honeycomb. And in that day and time, in that era of history, the honey and the honeycomb was the sweetest sweet they knew of. And very precious few people ever got to actually enjoy it. Father, I pray for my friends that fit words, words that are fitly spoken, that are round like a wheel and roll right into the slot, which is called need, that is called issues, that is called problems, that is called absence or lack of peace. I pray for my friends that your word your fitly spoken word would come up in them and that they would speak it and that it would roll right into those slots of issues and needs and wearisomeness. Oh, I speak to weariness tonight. I declare that the word of God is coming up in you. You know the word. You've read it. You've heard it. You've had it taught you. Let that word come up. I speak to the word of God that is in my friends. Maybe way back in the back of their mind. Maybe way back in their uh, memory somewhere. Memory banks. Maybe it's been, been laying back there under the stuff of life. Under the passage of time. Under other issues that were so immediate that had to be dealt with immediately, I pray that your word come up in them now, tonight, tonight, now, as we are beside still waters together, communing with you, Lord, communing in your word. Holy Spirit, we would not commune without you. We cannot commune without you. And you are the one, Jesus said, when you are come, would bring to our remembrance. Holy Spirit, bring your word to the remembrance of those who need to remember your promises. Your promises. Uh, there are probably people who would say, uh, Marty, uh, no one's walked up to me and said, here's a promise of God for you. Take this. That's never happened in my life. I've heard of other people that have had that happen. I've been in services where that happened. It's never happened to me. There are, I've, I've read in the past uh, somewhere that there are 8,000 promises in this book. Not 8,000 verses or 8,000 words, but 8,000 promises of God in this book. Maybe if we spend some time in here, we can find some that we can get a hold of and hold dear to us. Maybe we could copy Mary, who when the angel spoke to her in Luke 1 about the fact that she would conceive of the Holy Spirit and that she would bear one whose name would be Jesus, 
after the angelic visitation and his prophesying to her, and after Gabriel had departed from her, the Bible says that she hid those things in her heart, but she considered them. She didn't just throw them on a back shelf somewhere. She considered the words of God. Holy Spirit, bring those words, those promises, those scriptures, uh, those prophecies, those encouragements that we've received. Mm. You may not have people who walk up to you and grab you by the shoulders and say, here's a promise or, or take this, but you can hear, anyone can hear preaching. Anyone can hear teaching. Uh, uh, Kathy, every day that she exercises, she has her, uh, her phone, her iPhone, and she has an app on it that reads the Bible to her. She leaves it playing. When I exercise, I'm grunting and making so much noise. Uh, I can't hear, uh, you know, anything from a, an iPhone, but, but Kathy is a, a lady, and she exercises in a manner that she can hear those scriptures. I mean, there's so many ways we can hear the Word of God. And as you hear it, just let your heart reach out. Let your heart yearn for the Word. Let your heart uh, grab hold of something. And when you grab hold of it, pray that. Confess it. Profess it. Out into the atmosphere where your ears can hear your own voice proclaiming the promises of God. A word fitly spoken and in due season. Oh, in due season. Hmm. In due season. Yes. That tells me that God knows that due season where that particular word would fit or that that sometimes there's a void in us let's just admit it it's in our soul maybe our spirit it's in our heart it's in our chest Maybe you can identify with this. There have been times I felt like I had a, a hole in here somewhere. And there was just such an empty feeling. There was no sense of victory in Christ. There was no sense of, hey, Christ dwells in me and I could go minister to that person or that person or possibly have a word for, for this other person. Or I could contact somebody. And I mean, I felt like, wow, with this empty hole, what can I do? But then eventually as the Holy Spirit would, would touch my life or I would hear something preached here or something taught there, the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God is very important. That's why one of the five-fold gifts that Christ gave to His bride, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 is a teacher to strengthen us to bring us to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ I'm telling you just I, I started to say every once in a while but pretty regular I just I just need to hear the word preached I'm preaching all the time I'm traveling I'm teaching I'm uh, ministering in conferences, seminars, local churches. But there are times I need to sit down and hear some preaching. And those words as they come to me with what I'm dealing with, with the, the hole that has been ripped there by, uh, excuse me for using the word, but by the violence of the onslaughts of daily living the Bible says many are the troubles of the righteous but that's not where the verse stops the rest of the verse the latter part of the verse says but God delivers them out of them all we, we there is that thing we need the Word of God to fitly 
come into, to roll into like a wheel we, and, and fit. There, there is that place, but we've, we need to hear the Word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I would like to say answers come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, peace comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So many times the Scriptures have spoken to my heart. And I might even be reading a portion of Scripture that doesn't deal with that, that exact issue, that exact slot that needs something in it for resolve, for to bring something to a conclusion, to, to rescue me. But the Word of God is alive and active, and God knows in a due season how to fitly bring to us. And that portion of Scripture that I'm reading or that portion of Scripture that I'm listening to on a podcast or an MP3 file or YouTube or or somebody live like this on Facebook, it, uh, it does that. It rolls into that, and it rolls into that. And it's a fit word in due season. God is doing that. It says, a word fitly spoken, Proverbs 25, 11. That's our theme, a word fitly spoken. And in due season is like apples of gold in settings of silver. That's a beautiful picture. That is a beautiful picture. Apples of gold in settings of silver. How pleasant, how beautiful, how artful. Father, I pray that those beautiful apples and those beautiful settings be set right down into the middle of those ugly, barren, holes and slots in our lives where we need the Word to fill, where we need your wisdom to fill, where we need your love to fill, where we need your awesome, awesome Holy Spirit to fill. Hmm. And we know that if your Spirit come and just roll into that slot, roll into that place that needs an answer that needs filling, that needs supply, that needs resolve. We know your spirit cannot be separated from your word. No, and your word cannot be separated from your spirit. That when your spirit comes to minister to us on a personal level, he comes in the power of the word. He comes with the word. He sends the word. He delivers the word. Oh God, for your word, for those apples in settings of silver. Beautiful words of life. Growing up as a boy in my dad's church, I remember Brother Ramey leading that song so many times. Words of life. Beautiful words of life. Mm. Thank you for the beautiful words of life that are dispelling darkness in my friends tonight. Beautiful words of life that are rolling gently, rolling fittingly right into the slot where they need that word, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Let's go to the, the next scripture. I have three scriptures. This is the second one. Our theme is a word fitly spoken. Proverbs 15 verse 23 says, A man has joy in making an apt answer. I want that joy. Let's experience that joy. Let's seek the face of God <clears throat> that He might give us words, give us answers. It says, a man has joy in making an apt answer. That is a joy. When you have an answer for somebody, they need something, that's a joy. It's a joy to see the, the look of relief come on their face. It's a joy to see the, the look of revelation dawning in them suddenly that, well, yeah, 
All through last year, one of the things that carried me through the year was the, the, the Lord spoke to me early in the year in 2018 that there are things that just simply cannot go unsaid. Uh, most of my life, I've gone through life thinking, well, you know, I, I could have said such and such in that setting or something. I'm driving down the road thinking over a, a, a conversation I was in or a meeting or something. Oh, that, that should go unsaid. And the Holy Spirit would say, no, it can't go unsaid. Truth cannot go unsaid, no matter how simple. Well, I feel like if I would have spoken up and said that little simple thing in that setting, I would have looked odd or sounded odd or whatever. But then the Holy Spirit began to, that's one of His ministries to us, to the body of Christ, is to bring to our remembrance. And then the Holy Spirit would bring to my remembrance times that somebody had said something very basic, very simple. And it was the fitly spoken wheel, word, that rolled right into that slot where I needed an answer, where I needed a, maybe even a rebuke, uh, where I needed just a little prodding or something to get to the solution or to apply myself in a solution. And it was very simple. Truth, no matter how simple, has the same value as truth that is detailed or in-depth or something like that. I don't, I'm not looking, finding the right words, but truth is truth and it has the same value at any level. It has the same value at any number of words. If truth can be spoken in one word or three words, it has the same value as a 45-minute sermon, especially to that person who needs an apt answer. Proverbs 15, 23, a man has joy in making an apt answer. I declare to you that throughout 2019, you are going to have the joy of giving an apt answer in due season because Holy Spirit's going to bring the Word up in you. He's going to enable you. He's going to inspire you. And He's going to inspire that Word to others, and they're going to find answers. Receive it. The latter part of verse 23 there says, And the Word spoken at the right moment, dash, how good it is, exclamation mark. A Word spoken at the right moment, how good it is. You are a bearer of the Word of God. You bear this Word that's in you. Once it's in you, once you've heard it, it's in you. Satan can't take it away. The circumstances of life can't take it away. The truth of God's Word is in you. I urge parents very often, often parents who have a child in prison, a son or a daughter in prison, and I say child, they may be 40, 50 years old. They may be 20, 30, uh, of various ages. And they say, Brother Marty, pray with me. If you possibly might have a word about my son or my daughter who is in prison, pray with me. I, I, want, I want my child out of prison. My heart breaks every day, every moment that my child is in prison. Pray with me, Marty. And I tell them, I assure them, hey, mom, hey, dad, if you have ever spoken a scripture to that child, if that child ever sat in Sunday school and heard a scripture, if that child ever sat with you in church and heard a scripture, if you've ever sent them a scripture into that prison in mail or a Bible or anything, if they have any, even a portion of a scripture, folks, this may be hard for you to believe, but it doesn't even take an entire scripture. If a scripture's got 15 words in it, and all your child has heard is four or five of those words or 10 or 12, they don't have to have all 15 of those words of that scripture to, 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 to receive something from God, for something to rise up within their spirit that they grab it and receive the life of it. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm all for the true word. Every word and every scripture, I'm all for that. But that's how powerful the word of God is. It is alive and it is active and it can't be anything else 
it may be covered up by a bunch of stuff in that child's life and that child's memory or psyche, but it's there. Call it up. Call up that word. We call up the Word of God in our friends who have loved ones in prison. They may not be behind iron bars. They may be in a prison of dependency or, or uh, uh, de- uh, some kind of addiction or something. Or they, they may be under the sway of strong personalities. But we call up that word and we call them to freedom because we declare what the word of God says. We're going to agree with the word of God that the word of God, Hebrew says... The Word of God is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's in there dividing between soul and spirit. Mm. Let's read the last verse, the third verse that we have for tonight. Our theme is a word fitly spoken. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. I'm in the Amplified. Isaiah 50 verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of of a disciple and one who is taught. That's inspiration for me. God, let's do that, friends. Let's take hold of that scripture. If God did that for Isaiah, if God gave him the tongue of a disciple, a follower, a faithful one, a devoted one, if he gave him the tongue of a disciple and of one who is taught, I'm going to take that promise of what was given to Isaiah. Isaiah was your son, God. Isaiah was your servant. Isaiah was a prophet, true. But he was a man, and I'm a man. He was a human being, I'm a human being. He had the, uh, the, the weakness of a human being that all of us have, but he had knowledge of your word. He had Uh, uh, fellowship with you and and we in our fellowship with you tonight are saying give me the tongue of a disciple give me the tongue of one who is taught Mm. hallelujah if you teach your child how to ride a bicycle you don't just sit there and and tell them about riding a bicycle. You know, you gotta steer it with the handlebars and you gotta get it going with your feet and pedal and constantly pedal. That's not teaching a child to ride a bike. You get out there with him, beside him, beside her. That child may fall off of that bike a couple of times, may skin a couple of knees, but after a while they're riding that bicycle by themselves. That is a child who has been taught to ride a bicycle. Uh, I, this, this isn't just somebody that heard a scripture somewhere, but they can apply that word. The tongue of a disciple, of one who is taught. God, give us that tongue of a disciple, of one who is taught, who has learned, who can apply that word in due season so that the word rolls into that slot that is needed in that person's life. You're a bearer of the Spirit of God, and you're a bearer of the Word of God. It goes with you everywhere you go. The Spirit of God goes with you everywhere you go. And the Spirit of God empowers that Word, propels that Word. Amen, Satoskasa. God, we would be your speaker, the one who speaks that Word who brings resolve, who brings answers. Mm. Are you claiming that? I'm claiming that. I declare into the atmosphere. My ears can hear it right here. I have the tongue of a disciple and of one who is taught. Now don't try to make it sound like Dr. Billy Graham. Don't try to make it sound like some great preacher that you've heard on TV or some great prophet you heard somewhere, just just release it in the way God's made you. Release it in love, compassion. Let that be your driving force. 
I have the tongue of a disciple, one who is taught I should and that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. I've been weary on many occasions. I'm looking at this camera and I know there are people who are looking at my face, hearing my voice, who have been weary. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's bring vengeance on the enemy that brought that weariness, that promoted that weariness. Let's bring vengeance on him by speaking an apt word, a fit word in due season to those who are weary. You don't have to be unweary to speak a word to someone who is weary that delivers them from their weariness. Hmm. Wow. Because it's the word that does the work. It's the word that does the work. The word is alive and active and Holy Spirit propelled. The latter part of Isaiah 50 verse 4 in the good old Amplified Version says, He wakens me morning by morning. He wakens my ear to hear as a disciple, as one who is taught. I'm taking that. I'm praying that. I am professing that. That morning by morning, whether it be 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., whether it be 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., morning by morning as I awaken, O oh God, these ears are tuned to your station, to the station of the living Word that is alive and active that I might have an apt word that will roundly roll into the slot that others need. That fit word in due season. Praise God. Receive it tonight. Receive the word of God that is alive and active. Receive the word of God that is actively impacting your life. Pray it. Declare it, profess it, get it out of your mouth into the atmosphere. Get it out of your mouth to others. Mm. Father, I thank you for my friends that they are have tonight received an apt word, that wheel that has rolled into their life, that is rolled into their heart, rolled into their psyche, rolled into the middle of their environment. And that all night long they have a ready ear, the ear of a disciple, the ear of a taught one. And that all day tomorrow and the days of the week to come and beyond that they are hearing your word. That is the word of life, the word of deliverance, the word of victory, the word of solution and answers. The word of life. I speak the word of life over bodies that are diseased, over bodies that are infirmed over bodies that are in pain and aching. I speak the word of life over minds that are troubled. In Jesus' name, be whole. Be whole in Jesus' name. Love you. Praying for you. Laying my hand on that screen. Claiming victories for you daily. God bless you. Rest a rest of recovery and restoration tonight. God bless you. Be looking for you. On the next segment of Beside Still Waters, share this one. Tag somebody in, send them the link, let them know that it was on, and uh, let them be edified too. And you take this challenge and mandate that's not from Marty Gabler, but it's from the Bible, that you can speak apt words in due season. Speak them in your own due season. Speak apt words to yourself. Look in the mirror if you have to. Words of life, words of victory, overcoming words the word that never fails. It's the solid rock that the storm cannot blow us off of. Love you. Bless you. Praying for you. Good night.